Hello there. Um, this module, Health Assessment of Children, is probably the most involved one in, mo in week one. So this podcast may be a little bit longer. I'm going to go through the PowerPoint, um, hitting on some high points, and then I'm going to open up the chapter in the book, and we're going to go through some key points that I want you to pay special attention to in the book. All right, so when we assess a child, um, there, there are similarities um, in children and adults here, but you also have to include the parents when you're assessing um, a child. So there's some extra steps and extra questions that you need to ask in um, getting a health history, doing an assessment, things like that. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice <clears throat> is you, like I said, you have the parent involved in the, in the care. So one thing you want to notice is the observation of the parent-child interaction. How do the parents and the children interact with each other? Uh, do the parents get angry easy? Um, are the children not disciplined well? Those are the kind of things that you want to um, make note of when you're assessing kids. You also want to do a good physical assessment. <clears throat> um, this, if you're doing... If you're doing a head-to-toe assessment or a well child check, you know, this may include getting the child in a gown and um, exposing parts in a teenager that, you know, they may be very um, private and may be very modest. So um, it, begin, it gets a little tricky when you're doing a full head-to-toe assessment. Uh, the role of the nurse when performing a physical assessment on the kiddo. The best thing that you can do is make friends with that child before you do an assessment. That way you'll get a really good assessment. Um, if they don't trust you or if they're scared of you, your assessment's going to be pretty darn difficult. So make sure that you go in, make friends, blow bubbles, do distraction, turn on the TV, whatever you have to do. Um, but get get that kid on your side. Um, communicate in fact effectively with the parents. Make sure you listen to the parents. Um, listen to their concerns. Yes, we all have listened to parents. We've been that parent, probably, that goes in and um, you know tells our health care provider what we want, um, the way we want it done. Listen to those parents. Okay, if, the more you get them on your side, the better off you're going to be too. Make sure you do a systematic physical assessment. Head to toe works very well. Uh, and again, you have family dynamics to deal with when you have the when the when you have the parents involved. Um, these are just some of the things that you want to look for when you're observing that parent-child interaction. And again, I'm not going to read through PowerPoints word for word. You guys have access to all that, so you can do that. Um, therapeutic communication. You just thought you were done with psych, right? Um, therapeutic communication with parents and with kids very important. Make sure you actively listen, again, with those parents. Listen to their concerns. Um, use open-ended questions. This is especially important with teenagers because you'll get a lot of, yep, nope, yep, nope. Um, so make sure you ask questions that are open-ended. All right, following statement, true or false. The nurse is eliciting a health history from an adolescent. It's recommended that the nurse acts like the teenager's peer in order to gain respect. False. Okay, nurse should remain in the role of the healthcare provider um, while demonstrating respect and acceptance towards the teen. So don't go in there throwing a lot of cool words around. Um, not going to get you too far. Maintain your, your professional role. All right, collecting a complete history. Make sure that you get prenatal history, newborn history. All of that can be very important later on in life. Family history is very important. Um, there's a genogram in the book, you know, that talks about um, asking about family history of cancer, family history of cardiovascular disease, so make sure that you get a family history as well. Here's co some components of the health history. Again, the family health history, functional history is important, um, developmental history is important, whether they were a preemie, uh, whether they were developmentally delayed when they were um, toddlers, make sure you ask about all that. Chief complaint in history of present illness, what's going on right now that brought them into your office or into the emergency department? 
You want to ask about prenatal, perinatal history, um, illnesses, injuries, hospitalizations. You want to ask about their shots. Are their shots up to date? Any allergies, of course, to medication or to food. Um, any specific diets, if they're lactose intolerant. Um, menstrual history and adolescent females, when was their last period? That's something that you need to, you need to um, promote that they need to know that. They can't look at mom and say, mom. Um, so make sure that, that you ask about that. We have to start asking about periods, I think, at age 10 now. So, and here's the genogram. Obesity, hypertension are things that um, need to be explored if there's family history of those, um, as well as cardiovascular disease and cancer. Risk factors for some cardiac problems, if they were preemie, if they have any kind of congenital heart disease, um, family history, ask about their parents, grandparents, um, if they died at an early age from a cardiac, sudden cardiac death, those are all important. You want to do a good review of systems, make sure you hit all your systems. Um, growth and development is important in kids. You'll, you'll assess their developmental level to see if they're on track with their Piaget and Erickson's. Um, so that's an added component that you don't usually do with an adult. Um, skin, head, neck, respiratory systems, um, again, a good head-to-toe um, assessment if you're doing a full full assessment. If you're doing a focused assessment, this, this may change a little bit. You may not um, involve every system. Your chief complaint, make sure that you ask all your questions that you need to know about your chief complaint. When did it start? How long has it been going on? Has it ever happened before? Uh, what have you done about it? What makes it better? What makes it worse? Very similar to chief complaints in adults. Nurse is conducting a health assessment of a teenager and ask about his daily routine. What aspect of the health history are we assessing? I feel like I should be singing the Jeopardy song. We are looking at the functional history, how the child functions. Okay. And the role of the nurse when performing a physical assessment on a child. Again, you've got to establish that rapport and make sure you keep them, make sure you maintain their privacy. Make sure that you identify your patient. Make sure you have two identifiers. Ask name, date of birth, if you have to ask parents name, date of birth. And make sure you approach the child in a developmentally appropriate manner. Um, you'll learn there's some techniques I think in your clinical notebook, we talk about assessing a child and um, some developmentally appropriate ways you can do that. All right, some developmental considerations for examination. Um, if they're an infant, if you want to assess them in mom's lap, go for it. If that's where they are the most comfortable, then that is absolutely fine. Uh, preschool or school age, they may want to play with your stethoscope, let them listen to their heart. They love that. And of course, you know, teens, they want to bundle up and prefer privacy. Um, make sure you direct conversation. If it's appropriate to ask the child questions, then do that. If it's not, ask the parents questions. Nurse is performing a physical assessment of a 16-year-old girl. Which, is the which of the following is a recommended guideline for interviewing a child at this developmental stage? I'll let you read through the answers there. You might be surprised at this one. Answer is D. Okay, so we <clears throat> we try to, when they're teenagers, make them responsible for their care. So we kind of transition them into the adult care world. Um, nurse should explain confidentiality to the teen and the caregiver. Um, talk to them each separately. Now, make it aware if the teen divulges something that we feel like as as nurses that it's going to affect their safety or um, going to endanger someone or themselves, then we are, we are obligated to tell parents that. Um, but, and the last sentence here, the nurse should also use a head-to-toe approach with a genital exam performed last. Very infrequently do we do genital exams unless that's the chief complaint. Now, if it's a, a, like a physical or a well child check, then yes, you know, we need to do the hernia checks on the boys and the, um, you know, the checks on the girls. But very rarely do we do those routinely. Um, some components of a complete physical exam. 
course, you've got your assessment. How do they look? Do an across-the-room assessment. Um, got to get your vital signs. Got to get your weight and your height and your head circumference. Head circumference um, in babies, BMI in ages 2 and up. Um, you'll note that when you go into the clinical setting and you have to do your growth charts um, for ages 2 and up, the, the BMI, you have to calculate the BMI and chart that on the, or plot that on the graph. And um, make sure you uh, look at their activity level. Are they oriented? Are they walking straight? Um, their mood? Are they all depressed? Um, and a pain assessment. And we'll talk a, little, talk a little bit more about pain assessment in the pain module. Uh, head to toe again approach works best. Now, steps of the physical exam. These are just like adults. You observe first, then you palpate, then you percuss, and then you auscultate with one exception. I think you probably remember what the exception is. It's the abdomen. On the abdomen, you observe, and then you auscultate, then you palpate and percuss because you don't want to uh, stir things up in there and not be able to hear accurate bowel sounds. All right, again, just ask about the order, and you inspect, you palpate, you percuss, and you auscultate with the exception of the abdomen. All right, so vital sign findings. Now, you're going to find different variations of normal, okay? This is what's currently listed in your text. Um, in your clinical notebook, they vary just a little bit, you know, vary just a little bit. Um, if you have a question on an exam that has to do with an abnormal vital sign, if it is abnormal, it's going to be abnormal, okay? It's not going to be one of those borderline questions, all right? You just kind of need to know the range where normal um, coincides with other normal. So you can take this chart. You can compare it with the one in your clinical notebook, and you can kind of see how they compare. <coughs> all right, respiratory assessment. Now, if you've got a child that may or may not cooperate with you, toddler age, preschool age, you may want to do your respiratory assessment first, especially your respiratory rate. Count the rate, look at the effort before you even lay hands on this kiddo, because if you don't, you probably are not going to get a good respiratory assessment. Note retractions. Okay, when we talk about the respiratory system, we're going to go a little bit deeper into this. Um, in unusual sounds, wheezing strider, barky cough, um, note things like that. Now heart murmurs. I don't expect you to be able to really grade a heart murmur um, at this point in the game. If you say, yes, there's a murmur, no, there's a murmur, no, there's not a murmur, I think that's doing pretty good at your point. Um, grading a murmur, if you're going to be a cardiac nurse, then absolutely you need to be able to grade a murmur and you need to be able to tell me what kind it is. But I would not spend a whole lot of time um, on that right at this point. Um, cuff placement, you can take blood pressures in various places in children. I do not recommend the radial um, artery or the popliteal artery, just because I don't. Um, normally, we use the brachial <clears throat> or the lower or the tibial um, approach. So you'll either see it done A or D. When you're assessing growth and development, again, you come back coming back to the growth charts, you'll have to do these on each one of your patients that you take care of in clinical. So um, you'll talk about that more in clinical, how to plot them on the growth chart. <coughs> um, BMI, there's a uh, formula in the book. When we go over to the chapter, I'll show you where that formula is. Um, you do need to know how to ca uh, calculate a BMI. Um, some variations in skin color. It's going to talk about skin color. It's going to talk about lesions. Um, describing things accurately in nursing is very important. You need to be able to describe. If you talk about pale, um, you know, that may mean different things to different people. So you need to be able to accurately describe certain things. Skin color is one. Um, cyanosis, um, jaundice. Central cyanosis, peripheral cyanosis, jaundice. Um, you need to know what those look like. Okay, um, Go out on YouTube and find some pictures or some videos of kids with jaundice or um, uh, pallor or, you know, they, they, they vary 
it's not just pale yellow um, so that that could use some extra research on your part be careful though if you if you see a kiddo with like orange the tip of their nose is orange or their palms of their hands are orange ask about their food intake because if they're eating a lot of carrots especially babies they're eating a lot of carrots or squash or um, orangish baby food that can show up and make it look a little bit like jaundice but it's not really all right when you're talking about lesions make sure that you describe them well as as well um, macules crust papules we'll talk about this in the skin section but um, make sure that you have a good descriptive um, representation of your lesions. All right, nurses, is the following statement true or false? The nurse is examining an infant and documents cyanosis. This condition is a decreased pinkness in light skin children or an ashy gray color in dark skin children caused by anemia, shock, fever, or syncope. Mm, that's pallor. All right, when you sexual grade sexual development in children, this is another thing that's different from adults. You're gonna talk about Tanner stages. And um, there's good information on Tanner stages in the chapter, I'll show you where it is. But you're gonna record the Tanner stage. Um, what Tanner stage are they? And that includes breast, pubic hair, dis breast and pubic hair distribution for girls, pubic hair, penis and scrotum size for boys. So, if you're doing a head-to-toe assessment or a well-child check, that's where your Tanner stage will come in. All right, so now we're going to go over to the chapter, and we're going to touch on some things in Chapter 10 that I would like for you to remember. i um, not going to go through word for word, but again, this is about the health history. Um, throughout the book, you'll see National Patient Safety Goal information, um, we do a whole section on National Patient Safety Goals, so uh, it's great that they tie these into our chapter. All right, this just talks about um, approaching the caregiver, gathering your materials up before you go in, make sure you have everything you need. These little take note sections, really important, okay? So um, take note. All right, when you approach the child, make sure you approach it a developmentally developmentally appropriate approach. Don't, like we said, don't try to be the adolescent's peer. Make sure that you stay in your professional role. Watch how the parents and child interact. Um, figure out what kind of history we need. Do we need a full history? Do we need just a family history? Do we need to focus on a family history? Um, is this a focused assessment? So do we just need to focus on um, history of the present illness. So figure out what you need. All right. This is really interesting. Um, any questionnaires that you use in the healthcare setting, like um, if you're doing a behavioral questionnaire, they have to be written at a fifth grade reading level. Okay, this talks about the different histories. There's your genogram again. There's your review of systems. Make sure that you, um, if you're doing a full on assessment, make sure you hit on every area there. Development, mental history, very important. There's some things to assess during a functional history. All right, now this is a really good table, okay? So if you're doing a review of systems and you wanna hit on every system, these are some questions that you can ask um, has the child experienced blah, easy bruising, head injury, headache? Um, these are all things. Now, this is going to take you a while. This is not going to be a quick process. Uh, but if you're going to get a thorough, complete health history, here's some questions to go by. All right, next section. Your physical exam. Again, wherever the, the patient is the most comfortable, then that's where I would do their assessment. Again, gather your materials, let the kiddos play with the equipment if they like. Stranger danger, stranger anxiety, it's going to happen. Okay, so make sure that if the parent wants to sit there and hold that baby, then that is fine with you. Again, let them play with the equipment, that works well. 
Um, I want you to read through each one of the, I want you to read everything, but I want you to read through each one of these sections on the different age groups on ways to um, get a better assessment. This talks about some approaches that you can use. Okay, so first thing you do, get their general appearance. Do your across the room assessment. Do they look sick? Do they not look sick? Um, measurement vital signs. Okay, temperatures. You can take a temperature many different ways. Avoid a rectal temperature on kiddos that are immunocompromised or if they have any kind of renal or anal malformation or if had surgery. So um, don't want to do a rectal temp on them. Temporal, oral, tympanic, those are all ways you can measure temperature in a child. Heart rate, try to get them as calm as you can. A lot of times they're really nervous, so their heart rate's going to go up. Um, listen for a full minute when you're getting a heart rate. Respiratory rate, the same thing. Um, kids do what's called um, periodic breathing, so they'll breathe real fast for a few seconds, and then they may not breathe for 10 seconds. So taking a full minute on your respiratory rate and your um, heart rate, very important. O2 saturation, there's some information on measuring O2 saturation, and blood pressure. If you get a blood pressure that's way out of whack, make sure you take it again. The recommended way to take a blood pressure is a manual blood pressure. However, you'll see Dynamaps all over the place. So um, if you get one that's, that's way jacked up, make sure you retake it. And you know your normals because you'll find them in the book. Um, this talks about pulse oxes and where you can place the um, equipment. We looked at the blood pressures already. <clears throat> All right, and pain assessment. Again, we're going to do a whole section on pain, but make sure that you include pain assessment in your assessment. Body measurements, weight, and height. We measure everything in metrics. Don't forget that part. Okay, um, so centimeters, kilograms, etc. Make sure you weigh a baby naked, plus they're so much cuter. All right, there's your calculation for your BMI. Make sure you know how to, to um, calculate your BMI. Now this one, weirdly enough, we do it in the English formula. So we take pounds <clears throat> over height in inches times height in inches, height in inches squared. All right. Um, Again, I'm just hitting the high points here, so just because I'm skipping over it doesn't mean that it's not important. So if you're going to read any full chapter, I would recommend that you read this full chapter. That's a Mongolian spot. Um, you'll see that in darker skin kits. Here's some um, descriptions of vascular lesions that you might see, what they look like. Piercings, make sure you note that. And then this goes into each system, okay? It talks about palpation, or inspection, palpation, auscultation. Um, you can read through that. It does have some abnormals and some pictures of abnormals, which are very helpful. Some things to report. The absence of the red reflex in both eyes, um, that's a, that needs to be reported pretty quickly. Measuring ears, where they lie in relation to the the outer canthus, I think that's called, yes. All right, very infrequently will you need to look in ears of kids. Now, if you're a nurse, you want to be a nurse practitioner when you grow up, then um, that may be more important. But always pull the pinna up and back in a bigger kid and down in a smaller child. All right, mouth and throat, there's some teeth. Tell us when you get your teeth. Um, inspection of the throat, this mom has got this down. Okay, that's very good positioning. Um, more often than not, you'll have to use the popsicle stick in order to get a good inspection of the back of the throat. All right, this gives you some abnormals that you're gonna see when you inspect the chest. This is a pectus. Um, Kiddos that have this and have respiratory issues, really, it's really um, 
exaggerated that pectus when they're breathing in it really sinks in so be aware if they have a pectus and I ho I don't perceive that as automatic oh my gosh respiratory you know um, distress because it may just be then that's what they are normally if that made sense all right and again it talks about every system there's you some tanner staging information it tells you what to inspect in the, on the chest wall. Talks about getting pulses. How, where to listen to a heart. Um, again, the murmur grating, not really necessary that you know grating of your murmurs. Okay, and again, this just goes through every system. If there's any chapter that you're going to read in its entirety, please read this one. More Tanner staging information. There's some um, observation of the spine, some kyphosis and mordosis. This is um, some assessment that you might do as far as neurostatus, Romberg test, um, finger to finger, finger to nose, test some reflexes. This is good information on um, infant reflexes, so make sure you read through that well. And then, as always, your key concepts are very important in each chapter. So I know that that's a quick and dirty um, overview of assessment. Um, I would go through these, the chapter worksheet on each one of these chapters. Um, these questions are very good test-like questions. So they'll help you review for your exam. If you have any questions on assessment, please let me know. Have a good day.